Battery life is one of the most important design factors for many products, and it's also unfortunately one of the easiest things to screw up. What should last days might only last for hours. Poor power efficiency can even create a false need for an oversized battery, driving up both the cost and size of your product. That's why it's critical to understand these 11 common design mistakes that can suck the life out of your product. Now, I've made some of these mistakes myself, and I've seen them come up again and again in the hundreds of designs that we've reviewed inside the Hardware Academy. So if you've made some of these mistakes too, you are definitely not alone. We all make them at some point, and my goal is simply to help you avoid more of them going forward. Hi, I'm John Teal. I'm a former microchip design engineer for TI who brought my own hardware product to life. And for the past decade, I've been helping others develop and launch new electronic products. Mistake number one, not using deep sleep or low power modes. Your microcontroller has multiple low power states for a reason. If your firmware doesn't take advantage of them, you're leaving huge power savings on the table. ESP32 chips, for example, can drop to just a few microamps in deep sleep, but many designs just idle the CPU or stay in light sleep without ever going all the way down into deep sleep. You need to architect your firmware around sleep. That means writing code that waits for events instead of just looping, turning off peripherals between tasks, and waking only when absolutely necessary. Nearly every microcontroller family offers deep sleep or standby modes of some sort. Some can even wake on GPIO or timer interrupts without power draws in the nanoamp range. You should treat deep sleep not as an optimization, but as a requirement. This also means testing and validating your wake-up sources. A noisy GPIO line or unstable real-time clock interrupt can create false wake-ups, sabotaging your low-power strategy without you even realizing it. Check the description below to grab your Design Mistakes Checklist Bundle. You'll get this checklist here with all of the mistakes that I discuss in this video that suck the life out of your battery. Plus, you'll get all of my other checklists to help you avoid costly mistakes on your design. Links in the description below, or you can scan this QR code right here. Mistake number two is using linear regulators with big voltage drops. Linear regulators are simple, but they waste any excess voltage as heat. The bigger the voltage drop across the regulator, well, the more energy you burn and the more heat that you create. Remember, with a linear regulator, the power loss is simply the voltage difference between the input and the output multiplied by the output current. That loss becomes huge if V in is much higher than V out, especially for higher currents. Let's say you're powering a 3.3 volt system from a 3.7 volt lithium battery using a linear regulator. Well, that's only a 0.4 volt drop. So while you're still burning some power, it's still relatively efficient. In fact, in this case, it's about 89% efficient at 100 milliamps. Not ideal, but it's usually tolerable for most designs. But now imagine using a 12 volt supply instead. That same 3.3 volt load at 100 milliamps means the regulator is now burning 870 milliwatts of, as heat with only 330 milliwatts actually going to your system. That's less than 30% efficiency. And most linear regulators can't even dissipate that much heat without a heat sink. This is why switching regulators are so critical when stepping down from higher voltages. A good buck converter can easily hit 85 to 95% efficiency across a wide range of loads. And even in low current designs, the regulator's quiescent current matters. Some linear regulators draw hundreds of microamps just to stay alive, which can be more than your microcontroller uses in deep sleep. If your product spends most of its time in standby, well then prioritize low quiescent current over full load efficiency. And always match your power supply strategy to your input voltage and system behavior, not just what's easiest to drop into the layout. Mistake number three is frequent or unnecessary wake-ups. Even with the deep sleep in place, too many wake-ups can still kill the battery. Every wake-up event costs energy. Polling sensors on a timer is easy, but often unnecessary. You can reduce wake-ups by using interrupts for many applications once every few seconds or even every few minutes is enough. Think about how long your system is actually doing something. If it's awake for 100 milliseconds every 10 seconds, well, that's only a 1% duty cycle. 
But if it's waking every second, instead, even for the same 100 milliseconds it's awake, you've just multiplied your power draw by 10x. Displays are a common offender here. If the screen powers on with every wake up, even briefly, it can dominate your power budget. Reducing wake ups has an exponential effect on battery life. Mistake number four is ignoring temperature effects. Temperature affects both the battery and your system. At high temperatures, leakage currents go up in both the microcontroller and any analog circuitry. This increases standby current and waste energy even when everything should be turned off. Now at low temperatures, the battery capacity drops significantly. It may also be unable to deliver peak current draw, which can cause brownouts or resets. For example, a lithium ion cell rated at 1000 milliamp hours at room temperature may only be able to deliver 600 to 700 milliamp hours at zero degrees C. And peak current output might drop below what your system needs to even wake up properly. If your product is used outdoors or in fluctuating environments, you need to account for both ends of the temperature spectrum. That may mean larger batteries, better thermal design, or power throttling in cold weather. Mistake number five, not optimizing power hungry components, especially displays. Even if your core design is efficient, a single poorly managed component can ruin your battery life. Displays are often the biggest culprit. OLED displays consume more current the brighter they are, and white pixels draw significantly more power than black pixels. Backlit LCDs draw constant current unless dimmed or turned off. If the display stays on longer than necessary or runs at full brightness, it can quickly dominate your power budget. Every time the screen lights up, even for a second, that's a hit to your battery. Use aggressive dimming, backlight shutoff, or full display sleep when inactive. Dark user interfaces also help, especially for OLED displays. And it's not just displays. Other components like sensors, voltage regulators, and even indicator LEDs can draw surprising amounts of current, not just when active, but also in background or idle states. Always check data sheets for both active and sleep current. Mistake number six, using the wrong microcontroller or wireless technology. Just because you like a certain chip doesn't mean it's the right choice for a low power design. If your product only needs Bluetooth low energy, an ESP32 with full Wi-Fi capabilities is overkill. That extra radio draws more power, adds complexity, and shortens the battery life. Instead, pick an ultra-low power microcontroller with only the features that you actually need. The fewer the peripherals, the simpler the power management, and the longer your battery will run. I've had multiple members come into my hardware academy using an ESP32 variant of some sort when really all they needed was basic BLE advertising and a handful of GPIOs. In those cases, moving to a Nordic NRF52 or other BLE-focused microcontroller dramatically cut standby current and made it easier to hit their battery life targets. The same logic applies to sensors, displays, and communication protocols. Choose the leanest stack that gets the job done and nothing more. Mistake number seven is leaking current through GPIO pins. GPIOs can easily create unintended current paths if you're not careful, leaving pins floating, applying voltage when the microcontroller is powered down, or enabling pull-ups or pull-downs at the wrong time can cause microamps or milliamps of leakage current. This is especially common when using external circuitry powered by a different power rail. Another common trap is leaving an input pin floating that is sampled frequently. The pin bounces around electrically, consuming internal power as the buffer flips states. Make sure all GPIOs are explicitly configured for low power states and isolate powered down subsystems properly. That includes using proper logic level translators where necessary. Mistake number eight, not measuring or modeling power early. If you aren't measuring your product's current consumption early in development, well, then you're kind of flying blind. Many teams build the full system and only check battery life during final testing, but then it's often too late to fix. The board is locked and the firmware changes are limited. You should be profiling current during early development using a power analyzer or at least a multimeter. And you should build a power budget spreadsheet. How much current is drawn in each mode, 
how long each mode lasts, how much total energy that uses over time. For example, if your device wakes up every five minutes to send data over Wi-Fi and spends 200 milliseconds doing it, but your sleep current is too high, the overall energy drain is dominated by the idle leakage, not the Wi-Fi burst. Modeling this helps you see where the energy is actually going and where your biggest wins are. Mistake number nine is failing to disable unused peripherals. Leaving peripherals powered when they're not in use is a classic battery killer. That includes internal microcontroller blocks like ADCs, SPI, UART, and timers, as well as external devices. Just because something isn't being actively used doesn't mean it's not consuming power. In many microcontrollers, peripherals stay clocked and consuming power unless explicitly disabled. And external devices often draw idle current unless you cut their power entirely. That includes things like flash memories, sensors, and wireless modules many of which support enable pins or power gating. Even something as simple as an indicator LED falls into this category. If left on constantly, it can drain a large portion of your battery. Instead, flash it briefly or disable it completely when not needed. Carefully audit all peripherals in both firmware and hardware. Disable anything that's not essential between wakeups and always check whether initialization routines are leaving blocks enabled by default. Mistake number 10 is leaving radios on when not in use. Wireless radios are often the biggest power hogs in your product. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are convenient, but they draw substantial current when active. If your product only sends data occasionally, you should shut radios down completely between transmissions. Use connectionless protocols like ESP Now or Bluetooth Low Energy advertisements when possible. Batch your data, transmit quickly, and shut everything down as soon as you're done. Even small oversights like a Bluetooth advertising interval that, that's too short can reduce battery life from weeks down to days. Don't forget to grab your free Design Mistakes Checklist Bundle. These checklists will help you prevent mistakes and costly redesigns. The link is in the description below or you can scan this QR code right here. Mistake number 11, poor battery selection or sizing. Choosing the wrong battery ruins everything else that you did right. If your battery has too little capacity, too much self-discharge or too high internal resistance, your product won't perform as expected. Developers sometimes select batteries based on nominal capacity alone, only to find they can't handle peak current draw or lose charge rapidly in storage. This is especially common with lithium ion pouch batteries from unknown suppliers. Specs may be exaggerated or inconsistent and without testing under real loads, it's hard to know what you're really getting. Consider current capability, physical size, and voltage range under load. Run real tests with your actual hardware under real conditions, and make sure your pack includes protection circuitry if required. All the careful power optimization in the world won't matter if your battery can't deliver when it counts. If you found this video helpful, then you're probably going to like these other videos in this same series aimed at helping you avoid costly mistakes.